Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Mario is still connecting. We got David on here. We're gonna wait a few minutes to start here, just make sure everybody has time to, to join and get everything ready. So in, in the middle of a big rehab here right now, it's going well, but it's it's still just in, it's about halfway through. So we've got a lot to do here. Um, as you can see, there's lots of construction materials all around here. If you look outside through the new window, you can see that there's a lot of construction materials in the yard. Just a lot going, going on here. Um, and here, can't hear me, okay. Why am I muted? Can everybody else not hear me too? David can hear me. Sam, check your uh, volume and stuff on your end. Make sure. Hey, Andrew, how's it going? Okay, let's just take another minute or two here and we'll get started. Yeah, Sam's having trouble. I could hear. Mario can hear? All right. All right, guys, uh, this will be recorded too. So if you wanna jump on it later, I'll throw it up on YouTube after this. Um, sorry you're having trouble there, Sam. We'll get this figured out. So what we're talking about here today is a duplex rehab I have going in East Austin. It's a duplex that I just bought on the 6th or 7th of July. I'm, I'm blanking out on the date here. And it was in pretty rough shape. So I had a meet up here just before that and people could see what condition it was in. It's still in, it's still nowhere close to done, but it's in a lot better condition today than it was a month ago. So it was not livable according to FHA standards just a month ago. Um, we've got the, the new siding going here. The roof is only two years old. So the roof's pretty new. All new windows here now. Obviously we've got our new doors, a lot of materials in here for the rest of the construction that needs to be done. And things are just going pretty well. So real quick, before we get started talking about the numbers, I'll just take you on a tour and show you what we've got going already. Um, in here, all that's been done is paint. And they still have to do a second coat of paint. This is not done. On the exterior, we've done windows and siding and painted the whole exterior. So the, from the outside, it looks pretty good now. Um, from the in inside, still a lot of work to go. We have a light fixture in. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep that light fixture there. You're there. Maybe move it over here. Um, really all that's been done in this room though is paint and some light fixtures. It still needs the flooring. The flooring is in the entryway here. So it's here, it's ready to go. Just needs to be installed. In the kitchen, and sorry, you can't see it. It's a little dark. We went with white shaker cabinets. Nice white shaker cabinets. Uh, subway tile backsplash here and quartz countertops. The reason we went with quartz is you don't have to seal quartz every year or so and it's, it's really durable. So we wanted it to look nice but we also wanted it to be maintenance free. Uh, a big thing I do with my rentals is I want to do the capital expense right off the bat if I can. So things like windows, siding, and then in my remodels, I try to make them as durable as possible. I want it to look nice. Of course, I want it to look nice so I can get high rents, but I also want it to make it very durable because so I don't have to come in and fix things every so often. So in this case, that's why we're using these white shaker cabinets, a quart countertop. I'm not doing subway tile up the wall. I know that's something a lot of people do. I think it'll look just fine with just the paint there. This will have a washer and dryer in this little alcove here. And then over to the side here, it's the water heater, but 
it's an electric water heater. All of the electric will be covered by the tenant. All of the gas will be covered by the tenant. The only expenses I will have here are water, sewer, and trash and lawn care, of course, but trying to keep the expenses at a minimum. I'm setting this up to be a long-term rental. I don't want to have stuff nagging at me every year. I want it to just be as smooth running as possible. Because of that, we did a new coil in this furnace. This furnace is only 10 years old. So we did a new coil. We did new AC compressors for both units. So the other unit has a completely new furnace new AC compressor. This one just has a new compressor and the new coil. Uh, my HVAC guy said that should make it last at least another 15, 20 years. And that's great. Because I, I don't want to have too much maintenance room for it. We went with uh, the five panel door here. So kind of looks fancy. It's not expensive. It's not fancy. In here, there used to be tile. They tore up all the tile. That's why there's the grout on the floor still. That's gotta be cleaned up a little bit. And we're going to use this luxury vinyl plank from Life Proof. It's very durable. I have it in a couple other rentals. You can drag a dresser straight across it and doesn't put any scratches or anything in it. It's almost impossible to damage it. That's why I love it. It's a little more expensive than some flooring you can get. It's about $3.30 a square foot, but but I'm okay spending a little more to not have to fix something three to five years in. This flooring should last 10 or 15 years, no problem. Um, it's a floating floor, so it's really easy to install. It's cheap to install. It's, it's not a big deal there. It's just very durable. This will be the other bedroom. As you can tell, there is vinyl tile on the floor here. You can kind of see the tiles. They've already scraped that all up. And they're, they're working on the flooring in some areas. We're really not too far along. Um, they've gotten the bathtub put in. And they're doing subway tile all up and down here. So once this is all done, it should look really nice. Tenants love the subway tile showers. Um, I, I don't mind it myself, but you know, tenants really love that. There's certain stuff when a, a potential tenant comes in and they're they're looking at paying a higher than market rent or a, a maybe just even slightly above market rent. And they see stuff like stainless steel appliances, quartz countertops, subway tile, that kind of stuff goes a long way. And just to make people feel good about the money they're spending, you know, it feels fancy, although it's really not that expensive to do. So we will do stainless steel appliances in here. We're gonna have washer and dryer in unit. Each unit is actually gonna have its own yard too because of the way it's set up. So you can see here, there's a fence for the front yard here to keep it sectioned off. And then when we go to the back, there's a privacy fence in the backyard. So it's like having your own little town home and I'm gonna ask for a premium because of that. Now don't judge the backyard, it's in pretty rough shape right now. But once we clean this all up, we're going to work on a new fence option here. It should be in pretty good shape. There's just a lot to clean up here right now. They have not been able to mow the grass because there's construction material in it. So it's still got a lot of cleaning up to go, but it'll be really nice once it's done. All right, so now to the, the part I think we all care about more is the numbers. So as investors, we, we do this because we, we want to make money. You know, we're not just doing this to make something look pretty. Although that's fun too. You know, I really do like fixing old places up and making them look nice and really improving the overall aesthetic of the neighborhood. Uh, my neighbor over here to the side just tore down the house and they're building a new house. And that's a big reason why I bought this house. So I could see there was improvement happening in the neighborhood. So I bought this for $341,000 using an FHA loan. So I put down like $12,500 to buy this. It, it didn't cost me a lot to do it and was able to buy it without too many hiccups with the FHA process. Now this wasn't livable. 
according to the FHA appraiser when I got it. So the, the prior seller, the prior owner had to do a little bit of work here. He had to paint everything white. He had to replace the missing floor. He had to fix some, some open outlets that weren't grounded and weren't really didn't have any cover. There's just wires sticking out. And then we had to fix the air conditioning in one unit. I raised the price from 335,000, which I was originally under contract for, to 341,000 to get them to do that. So I gave them the bonus $6,000 to do around $5,000 worth of work. I thought I should bonus him a little bit for taking that headache on. And the closing was delayed about three weeks because of that. So 341,000 was our end price. I put down 12.5 to do it. And I knew what I needed to do with the rehab right away and had a contractor lined up to do it just day one. He was supposed to be in here. Um, we had a disagreement about some line items that I tried to remove. You know, I had a, a job all set up and the, the finalized bid came in higher than we originally talked about. So I said, hey, still wanna do it, but I'm gonna have to take this, this and that out. I had some other things in here like rearranging the kitchen and and having just everything perfect. And it's gonna be really nice right now, but it's not gonna be perfect or as great as it could. And because of that, we ended up parting ways. So I had to last minute, the day after I'd closed, find another contractor to come in here. And I, I talked to a few different people and I kind of pieced it together. So with the siding that wasn't part of the original job, I was just gonna leave the siding and paint it, but it was in rougher shape. So I found a small crew of guys they would do it really cheap. They did the whole, all the labor for this house was $6,800. Um, yep, Matthew, this is his primary residence. So I bought it with an FHA loan to live in. Uh, I don't live in it right now, but I will here probably by September or so. Um, so yeah, I, I found a cheaper crew to do siding with six grand. The siding itself, or 6,800, siding itself was around 4,000. So I got it done my bids were 15 to 20,000 to do it. I got it done for around 10. I got the whole exterior and interior of the house painted for around six or seven, which I thought was pretty good. And that was for scraping all the popcorn off the ceiling. The ceiling is now an orange peel. It used to be that popcorn that everybody really loves. And it looks a lot better and a lot smoother now. So I'm excited to live here. Um, <clears throat> my initial bid from the contractor was 52 it came back at higher than that for one unit and the exterior so that's when we had our disagreement and parted ways now i'm getting this done um for about 55 all in with the siding and windows andrew had a question um, i have a few properties how do i work in fha Really common, that's a great question, Andrew. Really common misconception with FHA is it's just for first time home buyers. It's not. It's for anybody that wants to use an FHA loan. Um, they're actually very easy to qualify for. A lot of loans won't allow you to make over a certain amount. FHA doesn't care. They're just gonna charge you that mortgage insurance premium. And that's fine if somebody else is paying it in my head. but. I didn't have any properties that were financed using an FHA loan at the time. Before I bought this, I had a single family with an ADU with a conventional loan, and I had three apartment buildings that were all financed under one commercial loan. So getting the FHA loan wasn't really a problem because I didn't have any FHA loans. So my plan here, um, this is kind of, this is probably going to be another question is how am I going to do this again? Uh, since I'm doing such a big rehab on it, I plan to, in year two, look to refi into an investor loan. So let's say 25% down loan, and I absolutely think I'll have the equity. So then year two, I'll be up and ready again to use another FHA loan. You can use them as soon as you don't have them. So if you sell your property with an FHA loan on a Tuesday, you can buy another property with an FHA loan on a Wednesday. You just can't have two at a time. There's very limited circumstances where they'll give you more than one. I know there are circumstances. Um, I'm not, I've never met anybody that's done it. So I think you're better off just figuring out how to, to refinance out of the FHA loan and get another one. So that, that's my strategies. I just try to 
limit the FHA loans that I have. I try to get rid of them whenever I can. And I've had clients have, have really good success with that, of just improving the value of the home and, and refinancing into a conventional loan. And they're way better off. So into this for 341, I'll be into the rehab for about 55. So we're putting it at 396 all in. The after rehab value should be around 450. Now there's a place with two less bedrooms down the street listed for 465 right now. Don't think it's gonna sell there, but if it does, that'll put my after rehab value a lot higher than 450. I'm just being conservative with the 450. So I already appraised at 364 before it was rehab in the terrible shape it was in it appraised at 364. So I know that I'll pretty easily to get to 450 just by looking at the comps and looking at what we're going to do to it. The rent we're aiming for is around $4,000 of gross rent, so $2,000 a unit. I rent a three bedroom not too far from here for $1,800. It doesn't have its own yard. It doesn't have quite nice of finishes. And it, while it technically has central air, it has ductless HVAC units. It doesn't have a furnace with vents all over the place like this. This is a more efficient cooling system. And it's just a little better location than my other one too. That street my other property on is on is a little rough. So I know I can get higher rent here. So I'm aiming for $2,000 on each side for rent. They're gonna pay gas and electric. I'm gonna take care of the lawn. I'll take care of water, sewer, and trash. So my gross rents will be around $4,000. Currently my mortgage is 2,500, but, but the property taxes were based on a valuation of $381,000. Now, I bought this for $341,000. So just right there, it already I'm gonna protest the property taxes there and get them down. What I'm also gonna to do to get the property taxes down is I'm going to homestead it. So that's a 10% reduction in property value that you're taxed on once you homestead a property. So my property taxes should go down quite a bit. I'm estimating around 7,000. They're at 10,000 right now. So my mortgage should go down quite a bit. Um, from David, did I buy it off the MLS or off market? Yeah, this was on the MLS for 45 days. Surprisingly enough, it had two pictures. It had a picture of the front of the property and then it had a pic picture of the side of the property. Did I lose anybody there? I had a call come in. So no pictures of the interior of the property. It was all just the exterior of the property, which was in decent shape. Um, windows were bad, siding was okay. The roof is almost new. So yeah, I found it on the MLS. I came and walked through. I've been watching it for a little while, but hadn't seen it. Walked through and that day I put an offer on it. I got it accepted about two days later. Um, yeah, I didn't know the rehab for the property when I put an offer on it. I didn't know what needed to be done. I, I didn't know a lot. And I know that I have an option period to be able to back out. Um, I have my due diligence period to be able to back out if I find too much that I'm not comfortable with and the rehab doesn't work. I knew one thing. I knew that this property was in an area that's growing like crazy. It probably would appreciate just over the years naturally. I knew it was in bad shape and I could fix it up and force a lot of appreciation there. And I knew the rents were terribly under market. The rents in each of these units is $900. So I still have another tenant next door paying $900 a month to live in a three bedroom unit in Austin, Texas, which is just crazy cheap. Um, but yeah, I, I think I, I tend to just shoot from the hip a lot of times and I, I know I've got the outs to get out and that's exactly what I did here. I just went ahead and jumped on it right when I saw it because I knew that it was a good opportunity and I figured out the rest later. In my 10 day inspection period, I figured out all the rehab costs. I figured out what else would have been wrong with it, which in this case is pretty easy because pretty much everything was wrong with it. But it was uh, pretty simple there. Just, hey, it all needs to go. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, Andrew said, how many flips like this have you done? I actually haven't done any flips where I bought it, sold it immediately, so I will not sell this. I'll be moving into it. This is my 
third bigger rehab project and it's all been using contractors. I haven't done any of the work myself. So, you know, it's, there's not too much worry there because I find somebody that who's recommended from somebody else, making sure to get recommendations and I know can do the work for me and they just do the work and I just need to know the numbers. Um, so yeah, on MLS, this is, I, I haven't done dozens of these, but they're pretty simple. It's just, Hey, what needs to be done? What's it going to cost? You know, where could it go wrong? You always want some sort of budget in there for it to go wrong. If this goes over a little bit, I'm expecting it, but I'm not too worried. All right, guys, that's kind of the end of my stuff. What questions do we have here? Oh, sorry, I saw another one there. Where do you find your contractors? All recommendations. Uh, I just talk to people who I know have done work like this before. Um, whether it's always other investors, really. I want to know that somebody's done a job like this for them and kept the budget in check. That's the biggest thing for me is it, the budget has to be in check because. If somebody find if I just find a random contractor off like a an Angie's list or something like that, it might be a lot more expensive. Uh, yep, uh, I don't actually live in this property right now, Matthew. I'll be moving in, into this in September. Um, yeah, as a primary residence, to buy it with a three and a half percent down FHA loan, you have to live in it. But kind of my strategy there is I'm going to buy something that needs to be fixed up, and I'm going to fix up and make it pretty nice so I can live in a nice place for really cheap. We'll pay $700 a month to live in this when it's all said and done. And I can pay 700 bucks a month splitting that 50 50 with my girlfriend and live in a nice place and have a cash flowing rental when I move out and we'll go do it again next year. So she's up next. We'll move into a property that she buys uh, next summer, do the same thing. Um, summer after that, I'll do it and so on and so forth. This is a nice place, I mean, or it will be. I'll have a yard, I'll have a storage shed out, I have a storage shed out back. It'll be nice countertops, nice cabinets, nice bathroom, nice, like everything I want, you know? Um, yeah, so East Austin is street to street. Some are rough, some are turning. It, it is correct. I would say it's all turning. There's still rough patches, but I'm not selling anything right away, so I don't mind too much if I buy on a rougher street right now, because there's still a bunch of young money moving in here and making stuff really nice. Um, are there any problems using FHA and not living in it for the first couple months? So I have to move in in the next 60 days here, or I'll be in, in violation. The address of this property, I'll put it in the comments here. Yeah, so you have to move in within a few months. Oh, sorry, that, I just did that to Sam privately. There you go. Um, so this is in 78721, which is the east side of Boston. This is what was traditionally the lower income neighborhood, but I can, uh, I can attest to that every third house here has been torn down and completely rebuilt. So it's turning up real quick. So the strategy I'm using here is called house hacking. Basically buying a, a single family to a fourplex and moving in it and renting out the other areas. And why I like house hacking is because I can get into properties that, that aren't, you know, they're in nice areas. They're areas I want to live in for really cheap. So three and a half percent down, I bought this place for under $13,000. And I'm going to live here for a year, save a lot of money while I live here, live for 700 bucks a month, and then I'll move out and be making over 700 bucks a month. So I project to make around $800 a month off of this thing. And that's a pretty awesome return when you only put down 13 grand. Well, there's the $55,000 rehab, which makes it more like a 14% return, but it should be pretty good. Um, from Andrew. 
I, yeah, I work in Texas and Minnesota. I'm currently in Texas myself. I have a team in Minnesota. Um, my team lead there, Adam, is awesome. When did I get comfortable with long distance investing? Uh, David Green's book wasn't out when I first did it. I actually read that when I was on vacation after investing uh, long distance. For me, I've always invested in, in other markets that I know really well. So I only invest in Louisville, Kentucky and Austin, Texas right now. Uh, I'm looking for opportunities in other markets, but I haven't found any. I would only invest somewhere that I could either drive to or have family in. Um, I'm from Louisville. I know Louisville really well. And I've got three apartment buildings there on the same street that my dad has an apartment building. So it makes it really easy. Um, Austin, Texas. Yeah, obviously I live here. And I, I thought about moving here for a few years. I lived here in 2016 and thought about moving here before that and just learned a lot about the market. So I'd lived here for a time. I lived here for a little while now and it's just, it just makes sense to me to invest where I know. Um, I know you can invest in any market. That's just not something I'm comfortable doing. Um, there's a cash flow is an interesting beast. So, Yes, you can find better cash flow in other markets. I think you're better off finding an opportunity in your market, Andrew, where you've got a great upside and doing that. Maybe you fix it up, make it nice, get a little bit of cash flow, but have a lot of appreciation and a lot of upside. Uh, you can find other markets like that too, but like let's say you go to Cleveland, which is in my opinion, just a cash flow market. You're just not going to see a lot of upside on something. And yeah, you might get a decent return, but you don't get a whole lot else. These opportunities come to market like usually once every couple of weeks. You know, I, I see them pop up. They don't scream deal at you. That's the hard part. They're not like deal, deal. This is a deal exactly like this one. This one had no pictures. It had no information. The rents were terrible. Um, there really wasn't anything there that screamed a deal. You have to learn how to spot a deal. So what you have to do, kind of my formula, is I figure out what the rent should be. So that's kind of my first stop is what, what could the rents be? Could they be enough to make sense? And then I figure out what needs to be done to get the rents there. So in this case, I knew rents need to be $2,000 a month and they can easily be that. What do I need to do to get them to $2,000 a month? And that's where the rehab came in. So if, if it makes sense to do the rehab to get the rents up to where they need to be, that's when the deal makes sense for me. If the rehab's just way too far and above what needs to be done, we're going to make a 5% cash on cash return and I have to do a huge rehab and manage all that, it's not worth it. But for me personally, I need 10% plus to be able to do something. Um, this one is a lot better because I've used an FHA loan and I put down such low money. Let me see if I can find my analysis on this here. I want to say I'm at 14% on this. One second, guys. I can't see. If somebody's asking questions, I'll get to it in just a second. Oh, wow. So, yeah, my definition does include repairs, capital expense, and vacancy. That's another reason I like bigger rehabs, is I like to take care of the capital expense right off the bat. I'm making above a 20% cash on cash return on this, assuming the rehab stays on budget. Now, that will go down a little bit if it goes above, but still way above my 10% mark. Um, and those are easy to do when you're doing an FHA loan and doing something like that. If you're doing a rehab with an FHA loan, it's pretty easy to make that happen. If you're just investing, that's why I like 10% plus. For vacancy, I budget at least 5%. I self-manage a lot of properties, so I rented my last unit out in four days. Um, for capital expense and repairs, I budget for about 10% there, even when I'm doing this rehab. Uh, Matthew, I don't believe I qualify for 3% down because I'm unable to move into rehab. Um, but you don't have to move in right away. You have at least 60 days. So, 
there are FHA 203k options too. So you can do an FHA 203k loan. What that is, is you get a contractor lined up to do all the work before you close and the bank has to approve this bid from the contractor. And then when you close, the contractor does the whole thing. Then you move in and they're totally fine with that. So FHA 203k is an awesome option for, for homeowners or, or house hackers. Um, I did not do that here. I probably will on one of the next ones. It's an awesome loan. I've done, done a few for clients myself and, and had it work out great where people have gotten the rents up and the values up and they've gotten into it for three and a half percent. The property taxes are not going to go up because I paid so much less for it than it was already valued at. So it was valued at 380. Even if the appraiser comes and sees what's been done, I, I don't believe they're going to go up. But in this case, the, it was valued at more than it was worth, and that's very uncommon. Okay, I'm reading Andrew's question here. I got my FHA loan for 3% interest. That's an awesome interest rate. That's amazing. I got three and a half on this because my credit got beat up from some medical bills I had. When your refances are taking larger interest rate. Yeah, usually. So usually when you refinance um, and you have to do something like this, you have to go into an investor conventional loan. So you need 25% equity. It's typically going to be a point above, so an interest rate point above what the homeowner occupant rate is. So if you did that right now, it would your loan would probably be about 4%. Um, if you drop the PMI, that helps too. So even though the interest rate might go up, you lose some PMI, and that makes it kind of a little bit of a wash there. It's, it's a case-by-case -case basis. I don't know what rates are going to do in a year or two. I know right now they're stupid low. 3% is just almost unheard of. I had a client get a 2.5% recently. Uh, I heard of one guy getting a 2.25% 15-year mortgage. It's almost free money. All right, guys, I have plenty more time here. So anybody has questions? Let me know. I'm going to turn down the AC. I had it up, or they had it up at like 87 because they're working in here with the door open all day. And I turned it down. All right, again, guys, this will be recorded. I'll put it on our YouTube channel, The Moorhead Team. And if you want to go back and look at any of this, go right ahead. Oh, wow. Way more people than I thought. I'm going to attempt to unmute everyone. Don't know how to use this super well. Here we go. All right, feel free to unmute yourself if you want. I did see another question came through. Don't see it now. Yeah, thanks for joining, Andrew. All right, guys, if, it, if nobody else has any questions, I'll be logging off here. Um, I'm gonna clean up around here a little bit and then take off. But yeah, th this kind of stuff, while it's Brian. not easy, it's totally doable Hello, for everybody. Anybody can do this, you know? FHA 203K is an awesome option. You know, if you don't have the money to do the rehab right now, an FHA 203K can make it happen. You just have to be diligent and looking for and finding deals. This took me a few months to find. You know, that's okay. I put in a few offers. But if you just keep going, I've never seen somebody not get one after they've tried over and over. So keep moving, keep going, and it's going to be great. Thanks for joining, hey, guys. Good to see everybody.